Hi, I'm Dr. Craig Castanet of Backstrong Clinic. I'm going to talk to you today about epidural steroid injections. Epidural steroid injections, and I'm going to use a model for a moment here, so let me grab this. Epidural steroid injections are a reference to the place where they put the medication, that's epidural, and it's a reference also to the medication they use, uh, steroid, and in this case it's a corticosteroid. There are different kinds of steroids, but corticosteroids are the kind that are used for inflammation, and they place it in the epidural space. Let me show you this model for a moment. This happens to be the low back, but it could be the neck. The anatomy is similar. The only significant difference is that in the neck, you have a spinal cord, and in the low back, the spinal cord is absent. Only the nerve roots are present in the, spinal, in the lower uh, low back. So if this is the spine, and these are the vertebrae here, or bones, there's a disc in between. The typical uh, cause of pain is that uh, as we age, there's progressive degenerative compression of the spine, meaning our spines get compressed. That's why everybody is shorter, not taller, as they age. So during the course of this process, the typical pain generators or sources of pain in the low back or neck are the discs, the nerves, and the joints. And all of these can be treated with a variety of injections. But epidural steroid injections are the most commonly given for the purposes of neck and low back pain and for treatment of those uh, maladies. Uh, where they place an epidural steroid injection, and they usually do this with you lying on a table, and they're looking at x-ray or fluoroscope overhead to see where exactly they're placing the needle. But the, the typical place to place an epidural steroid injection is to go in between these bones here of the vertebrae, right into this space, and right above the membrane or the dura that surrounds the nerve roots in the spinal canal. That uh, space above the dura is the epidural space. So the epidural region is where they place it. They place a corticosteroid in there that is a potent anti-inflammatory. It surrounds the region and the nerve roots in the region, including the inflamed nerve root. Uh, generally, epidural steroid injections are done for arm and leg pain because that reflects pinching of the nerve in the neck or back. They don't typically do it for what we call axial neck or back pain, meaning pain that's in the axis of the spine or the neck or the back, if there's not involvement of the arm or leg, uh, inferring a nerve root pinch. But they do sometimes anyway, because as difficult as neck and back problems are to address, sometimes you do it uh, an epidural steroid injection for reasons that maybe aren't exactly textbook, but you're hoping that they'll help, and they often do. Um, Epidural injections, uh, steroid injections, is something I refer people to uh, frequently. However, it's never the first course of action I would take with somebody. What we do prior to uh, referring patients for epidural steroid injections is something called spinal decompression treatment. It's the best treatment I've seen non-invasively and non-surgically for neck and back problems because it directly addresses the cause of most neck and back pain. And that cause, as I referenced earlier, is the progressive degenerative compression of the spine, compression of discs, pinching of nerve roots, compression of joints. When you place somebody on a spinally compression table as a means of treatment, you have them lie face up on a table, you secure them to the table, the table very gently separates the discs, nerves, and joints to get pressure all of the, off of those painful structures. And generally, if you get pain or pressure off of those structures, even though it's short-term, uh, process on the table, it initiates physiologic changes that generally improve somebody clinically so that they can avoid the, the need for uh, epidural injections. Um, most people will be able to avoid it with just the uh, treatment of spinal compression treatment and um, so that's also a very good litmus test for who really needs injections. So I'd encourage you to consider spinal compression treatment before considering epidural steroid injections. I should also note that about 30% of the people we see have already had epidural steroid injections, and the injections either didn't help or they stopped helping, or the patients decided they don't just want to do injections and never make any physical, mechanical, anatomical intervention in the course of this progressive degenerative compressive phenomena that's the source of most neck and back pain. And I would encourage you to do as well. Do spinal decompression first, and then do adjunctive injections if and when you need it, and that's the best way to treat these problems. We also treat people that have had surgery in the past with spinal compression. So anytime during the course of your life that you have a neck and back pain, 
it's appropriate to try spinal decompression treatment. Thank you very much.